This is the unboxing and review of the Antlia Quad Band light pollution filter. And we do all of that right after the trailer. Hey, this is View Into Space. I'm Sascha from Switzerland. So grüezi miteinander and thanks for watching my channel. So let's start with this expression light pollution filter. Because sometimes this name is a little bit misused for the wrong kind of filters. So a light pollution filter is a filter which filters out the light pollution but leaves otherwise the spectra about the same. So all the light from the stars, from galaxies, should pass through and only the human generated light from street lamps and so on should be blocked out. That is in contrast to a narrowband filter. And when we talk about one shot color, the dual narrowband filter. So uh, Optolong, L Extreme, L Ultra and so on, these are not light pollution filters because they're designed especially for emission nebula to only pass through the HA and O3 most of the time. And these kind of filters, they do not perform well when you shoot galaxies, when you shoot star clusters, and even when you shoot planetary nebula. So some use then no filter at all, and that works actually great until a certain level of portal. <laughs> And my estimation would be that everything above about a Bortle 4, you really have a benefit of using a light pollution filter. Now, until about a year ago, you had this generic light pollution filters like the Optolong L Pro, and this was kind of the go-to standard. Also, I used an L Pro. But in recent time, both Optolong as well as Antlia actually introduced these quad band filters. And this is probably also a response to the increase of LED street lamps, where a rather broad filter like a L Pro just doesn't cut it anymore. We have to go more narrow, but still ensure that the star colors stay as they should. Now, when we look at the paper that is actually included in these filters, we also can see how this is done. We see these four pass-through slots, and that's also why it's called quad band. But they do not only leave four, but actually five emissions through. And that's H alpha, O3, S2, H beta, as well as nitrogen. And then also, if you look back here, the near infrared area. And with that, we have practically all the emissions that's coming from the stars included, but everything else will be kept out. So the quad band filter is like a universal weapon for everything. Now could you also shoot emission nebula with it? And the answer is yes. If you're on a budget and you have to choose one filter, that would be it. Because it will, to a certain degree, block out all the light pollution and you can shoot everything with it. You're not as limited as with a dual narrowband filter. But obviously, Given the Bortle class again, at one point, and also with fainter nebula, this will also not cut it anymore. And that's when you then need these dual narrowband filters. Now, when we do the unboxing, which is obviously not as spectacular as with something big, there was obviously the paper in there, which you already saw. And then there's the casing for the filter in there. And I just love that with Antlia, it's so beautiful. It's like jewelry. It's held together by four magnet and it's very solid. So very nice box, which you could also use for something to display afterwards when you don't need the box anymore. Now, when we open it inside here is the filter. It's at the moment still in this package. And when we take it out, this is how it looks like. It's silver. It's not as golden as the and Lea ALPT, which is called the Golden Filter, which is the dual narrowband filter of Antlia. But it looks very nice, very high quality, how it's done also with the mounting around it. 
For the moment I do it back that it doesn't catch any dust. So I will now put this in my filter wheel and then we will do some shooting with it. I will compare it with no filter. Just that you see the effect. Same amount of exposures without filters, same amount of exposures with the filter on. Let's see if it makes a difference from a positive side but also from a negative side. For example, do we have more halos when we use the filter than if we do not use a filter? And so then we will have this comparison. Obviously another comparison which would have to be done is Optolong Quad versus this one, the Antlia version. They're both about the same expensive. Personally, I have everything from Antlia, from the ALPT, the dual narrowband filter, to all my 2.8 meter filters for the mono shooting. And until now I made a very good experience with it. They're usually more expensive than the Optolong filters, but usually perform better than the Optolongs, especially also from a halo point of view. Now that we here actually get the filter for about the same price it is a really good offer. And so that for me, when I had the choice between the Optolong one and the Atlia one, it was no question I went with the Antlia. But let's now do the shooting and see if I was right. So the results are in. Welcome to PixInsight. So yesterday I really really had about four hours of clear sky. I used it to test the filter and I want to show it to you in three different ways what the outcomes are. And the first is a very simple one. It's a simple picture shot with the filter. And that's obviously the Pleiades. This picture is not too exciting. It's about 40 pictures times two minutes, which is about one and a half hour integration time. And for that, I think it's pretty good. The only thing here I did was stacking, then a linear fit, then gradient correction, and that's it. So this is not stretched yet. There's no blur exterminator over it, no noise exterminator. That's the real deal. So obviously what we're mostly looking at here are halos. And when we look now at the bright stars, then yes, obviously there are halos, but they are absolutely okay for the brightness of the stars. It's not overly disturbing. So from my point of view, for the small integration time, that's actually pretty good. So the Pleiades were a reflection nebula. The next thing we want to look at is an emission nebula. So what we obviously best would cover with a dual narrowband filter. So here what I actually did, I took a single sub, one without the filter, one with the filter. So this is a three minute exposure of the Seder region with Seder in the middle also for the purpose to see how a halo behaves with and without filter. This is now without the filter. So the only thing I did here was debayering. And then again, a linear fit so that we don't have the greenish look, but that's actually all. So I stated here the picture without the filter. Now I will toggle and here with the filter. And I think the difference is quite remarkable from how much the HA emissions are better visible here than here. Here they are just faint, but here they are distinct within one exposure of three minutes. And that goes back to what I said before. You can absolutely use such a filter for recording emission nebula. You will get the better result than without the filter. Obviously, if you would shoot that now with a dual narrowband filter, the result would be even much more impressive. But then again, with the dual narrowband filter, you cannot shoot now the Pleiades or a galaxy or something like that. So here you have, as stated, like the jack of all trades. So here we want to compare now directly the halo over Seder, which is also a very bright star. So we zoom in now. So here we have now the halo with the filter. 
and I think that's absolutely okay. It's actually even less than I would have expected. If we toggle now, I wouldn't even say that the halo is less here. It's actually even more. It's a little bit different how the stars look like. Here you have like a little bit these rays, which you have less here. Also, if you look, for example, at these stars, which have a little bit of blue halo, they also have it slightly here. So here it's perhaps a little bit more distinct with the filter than without the filter, but also in a neglectable way, because again, we're very, very much zoomed in now. It's one on one. So I think this result here speaks very much in favor of the filter. So this here now, obviously Andromeda, so here I actually stacked it, I did a linear fit, I did gradient correction, I did SPCC, and I did stretching with a statistical stretch script, and then with GHS. So here we also talk about 42 minute exposures per picture, so one and a half hour integration time, same as with the Pleiades. So here without the filter, that's 40s integration time, not bad. Andromeda is nicely visible. We see here the bands. So let's see now if the filter was able to improve that. And it absolutely is. I think first of all, color-wise, we have much the nicer colors. It goes more in the reddish, while this is actually pretty colorless. That might also be because more of the red, more of the H-alpha actually was absorbed. Second thing is that the structure is much more visible. But what really strikes me, if you look for example around here where you see nothing at all, if you go now in the picture with the filter, you see up to around here the galaxy. So the picture is a lot better actually, in any way. So with that, we actually are at the end of the test. And to sum it up, I saw nothing which speaks against the filter, no massively increased halos, no other disadvantages. And in the two cases where we really did a comparison, in both cases, the advantage of the filter are very well visible. So personally, if you do not shoot in a border one or two area where really a filter doesn't make any sense at all, I would always use a light pollution filter if you do not use obviously a narrow band filter. But it really pays off and it has no disadvantages at all. So for me, the Antlia quad band filter is definitely my default from now on. So that's already it. I hope this was helpful. If you want to get up to date news about things I see that might be interesting, please have a look at my Patreon channel. Link is in the description below, where you'll always be the first to hear any breaking news. See you next time and clear skies.